Dad, let's rank the teams in the NFC West. Technically, here is how they lay out in the division after two games. First place, Seahawks 2-0. and Second place, the Cardinals with an overall net point differential of plus 25. Third place, the Niners. The overall point differential of plus 7. And fourth place, the Rams 0-2. Uh, point differential of negative 37 through two games. How would you rank those teams? From the bottom up? Yeah. Um, starting the season, I would have had the Rams way high. Yep. Way high. Maybe even number one. But I'd have to say, given how they performed and all the injuries they have, they're the fourth team, bottom team. How about you? They look like a, a a shot fighter with the glass jaw. They sure do. They do. Oh, Cooper Cups hurt again? Wow. Yeah. yeah. They do. Yeah. I would have to say okay. so, Dad. They got no defense as well. Okay. Rams Number last. Three. Number three, and this may be controversial after two games, Seattle. Yeah. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. Like they're they're two and zero, oh, but who who have they beaten? They've beaten Denver and New England. Is that correct? I believe that's correct. So that's not, and they haven't beaten them by much either. Let me just make sure I got that right. They won Week One against Denver twenty six twenty, and then they beat New England in overtime on the road twenty three twenty. Geno Smith is not a winning quarterback. He'll win games, but uh, he's he's not a big time winner. I, he's a game I, manager. I, I, at best, I, I don't like his work, Iggy. I, I just don't like his work. He plays with very little confidence. His quarterback rating is 97, completing 73% of his throws. You could do worse, but yeah, he's not. I don't see him ever beating the 49ers, like ever in his life. Maybe That's he will. how I feel. Yeah. Who's a better quarterback, Geno Smith or Sam Darnold? It's a it's a brain buster, right? They're about that that's Gino. That they're sort of in the same range, I would have to say. Okay. All Six right. one, half dozen the other. I w- would you prefer uh, Darnold? I'd prefer neither one. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. It's like, yeah, okay. It's the it's the quarterback you don't want to have. Darnold, Gino. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. okay. Here is for me number two. I'd put the Cardinals number two with tremendous potential. But <laughs> It's only two games in the season. They they have been already beaten once, right? They're one and one. Mm-hmm. They have, but they lost to Buffalo. It's a pretty good team. Indeed it is. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. Anyway, I would say they're number two, but they're coming on. I would agree. And uh, obviously that puts the Niners number one, but um, the Cardinals are closing the gap, and the Niners – may be allowing them to close the gap if they continue to play the way they played last Sunday. Yeah. What's interesting about the, the the Cardinals and the Seahawks, the Rams are a disaster right now, but the Seahawks seem like they have a really good defense. Well, They haven't played a really good offense yet to test it, but that could be tough. And then the, the Cardinals seem like they have a really good offense. A yeah, really absolutely. good offense. Yeah, And really exciting. Yeah. I'm going to tell yeah. you. And, and the kind of offense that gives the Niners trouble because the quarterback can get out of the pocket and scramble around. And I mean, Sam Darnold did that to them a few days ago. I want to tell you a funny thing, which I haven't told you. You know, one of my best friends is my friend Glenn. He mm-hmm. and I went, we met in 1968. We went to Stanford together. He lives, um, as you know, in Scottsdale. So he was really excited if, after the Cardinals beat the Rams. So I don't follow Cardinals. So I, I said to him, what's the name of the Cardinals coach? He's a Cardinals fan. He said, I don't know. Wow. He knew the quarterback, but he did. He didn't know the kid. I don't know That's the fair. coach's name. That's fair. I mean, he's not, he's, he's not famous. He's Jonathan Gannon, who was the defensive coordinator with the Eagles for a while. The offensive coordinator is a guy named Drew Petzing, who was uh, a, a, an assistant with the Browns for a while, I think he w- was one of these guys who learned from Gary Kubiak, who has mentored like half the offensive coordinators in the league right now. So they went from having Cliff Kingsbury, who's ridiculous, had, I mean, he wasn't even good in college, but he was running like a high school college offense. And now you have a standard to it above average uh, offensive coordinator and looks pretty good. And you have Marvin Harrison's kid, who's pretty good too. That's a big addition. 
That kid is terrific. So oh. was Marvin Harrison. <laughs> yes. So all of a sudden, that team looks really fast. Or like the Niners are good, but they're not fast. Jordan Mason isn't fast. Ayuk isn't fast. Debo's hurt. Christian's hurt. Uh, the, you know, the Jacob Niners, Cowing is fast. They could use him. The Niners are clever and methodical. Yes, they are. Clever and Take methodical. their time between plays. They do all those motions. Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Clever and methodical. I agree. I agree. Did you like those adjectives? You are good with words. Did you? anyone ever tell you that? I, I Maybe I should have been a writer. You often pick the right one, and I respect that because it's not easy. <laughs> the Gold Rush 561 says, thoughts about our new DC compared to Wilkes? Very early to say, um, but if you want my gut feeling, Wilkes is a better defensive coordinator. This guy seems in over his head. I'm yeah, sorry. Because with Wilkes, it was like, well, he's not bad. He's just deficient in certain areas where this defense should be good so we have to get someone else who can clearly upgrade those things and so far those things have gotten worse run defense third down defense gotten worse just two yeah. games though yeah yeah also nick Sorensen, like receive wilkes came from his own tree i mean he, he does his own thing uh Sorensen was a, an assistant coach with robert sala back in seattle for a long time so this is again tapping into that pete carroll tradition and scheme which the seahawks don't even run anymore they moved on they're like you know what we held on to this for a long time it is so passe we're gonna bring in a guy from the ravens pete you can be an ambassador to the team thank you very much and the niners are like no 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 no. we want that <laughs> and what's funny about it is it's like the principles of the Pete carroll defense was so cutting edge for a while was rush for don't blitz play zone hang back don't give up any long plays very few coverages. Uh, now that stuff doesn't work so much. And what works is blitz a lot. That's what Brian Flores did. Bring a ton of pressure, play man to man coverage. Um, so just want to point that out. Maybe that, that's, maybe that's what Brandon Staley will, will help the Niners do soon. Yeah. I'd like to know what his role is. Uh, it, what did he bring to, to the loss? <laughs> Can we talk to him? Mufasa says, what has Purdy accomplished that Jimmy didn't? That's a very good question. They both, they both lost, lost in the Super Bowl. In the Super Bowl, yeah. Yeah. I guess Purdy's, you know, he was in the MVP voting. And his numbers were better, but his team was better, too. He had Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, that's a good question. Gold Rush says, B.A. got paid. Does he no longer care? We, I, I, I wouldn't have any way of knowing. And Iggy, I don't think you do either. I uh, know I guess don't. Is, but my guess is he does. <laughs> 